I started with UTA in August of 95, and this was my first job out of college. And I was part of the design and construction team that were working on the implementation of the first light rail line um, f in Utah, the Blue Line. We did all the work for the Blue Line out of a small office on 21st South. I started uh, UTA in 1985 as a diesel mechanic, uh, right after they opened the Timpanogos division in Utah County. I started in uh, September of 1998 as an intern. So I've been here the, uh, the full 20 years plus. I started working for UTA in 1997 as a bus operator. Well, I started uh, UTA in 1980 uh, as a bus driver. I started working in uh, December of 1986, and I remember I was, I was so proud, so proud to be part of this company that had just won the best bus company in the country. I've been riding with UTA for 19 years. When we started doing the project, UTA was only a bus company, and so we didn't have any rail operators, we didn't have commuter rail operators, we only had bus operators. UTA was a bus company for 20 plus years before tracks opened. Union at the time, the ATU, uh, was very successful in helping us to come together and make um, training programs and policies and procedures that would make it so that we could actually operate and open up the system. We had um, the small UTA team that worked on the design and construction. So I think there were uh, seven or so direct UTA employees working on the rail system. And then we had a lot of consultants and contractors that were in helping us. Um, and then when we hired the construction contractors, it really got a lot more people involved with the rail system. And so the construction crews that we hired did an amazing job. Thank you also to to those who built the system, uh, you know, I've recently learned that there was some doubt in, in you know, UTA's ability to get the track system up and running. But 20 years later now, uh, you know, look, look, at what, look at what has been accomplished. There were many um, organizations and manufacturers as well as uh, consultants that said that the task that we were going to take on ourselves was probably not going to be successful because we were going to try to take uh, bus mechanics and help them to understand what trains are like, as well as take uh, bus operators and train them in how to operate uh, trains. He worked as a bus operator for about two and a half years. Uh, and then was about the time when uh, tracks were opening. I saw that as an opportunity and uh, applied for electromechanics position. I was one of those two electromechanics who were selected to fill those positions. Proceeded to help UTA procure the uh, light rail vehicles and bring them to Salt Lake City from uh, Siemens in Sacramento and commission them, test them, and put them into service. Um, and then we opened in 1999. The day I told somebody else that I would be driving trains, their eyes lit up and I could see, oh, do you really get to operate the trains? I was like the least senior operator and I was so, so excited. I wanted to be part of this new system coming into uh, Salt Lake. On startup, there was two female operators. It was, it was kind of proud to be a representative of, um, we can really do this and, and, and make a difference to our community. It's a real monumental leap to for someone to make a decision to go, okay, I'm comfortable being a diesel mechanic or being a, a bus operator and try something brand new, especially as new as rail is. Um, and for mechanics and operators to make that leap and say, yeah, I'm going to go try that. I'm really proud of them because it is, it's, it's a learning curve that is very steep. We've been able to come together and make that successful um, and with, with all the, the employees that we had at the time. I was perfect all the time. <laughs> Never made a mistake. Uh, uh, as an operator, I started out uh, from uh, Delta Center, and my train wasn't going the right way. And I immediately called it, uh, I think I've gone the wrong way. <laughs> oh my gosh, opening day. <laughs> that 
that was that was the highlight of my whole career I'm telling you opening day because prior to opening day it was we kept asking what if nobody comes the publicity the newspapers the radios they were saying light rail will never work in Salt Lake we're doing all of these big productions and what if nobody comes and then startup there were lines for two-hour lines for people to come in and it was a blizzard it was so cold that day people waiting in line just to come onto the system and it was packed opening day people just came out of the woodwork and the people were so mad because the first people that got on they didn't want to get off they wanted to go round and round it's like a ride at lagoon or something the time when I knew it was going to be successful is we had done a survey of residents in Sandy to find out what their opinion was of light rail and if they would ride it. And the survey came back um, and it showed that 50% um, of the people in Sandy said they would regularly ride the system. And when we were looking at the numbers, wow, if this many people from just Sandy ride it, we're not going to be able to um, we won't have enough trains, we won't have enough parking. And that actually played out to be true. When we opened the system, we opened it up with um, 23,000 riders. And I remember riding the train and listening to the other customers saying, wow, those guys at UTA, they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't buy enough trains. They didn't build enough parking. And uh, so I always kept my badge covered when I was riding the train. We only had 23 light rail cars when we started. We had limited parts, limited number of cars, uh, new technology, everybody were learning. 2002 Olympics uh, at that time, we worked for that whole month without any day off. That's how it was. No day off, worked seven days uh, for the, that whole entire month. You know, there's a lot goes behind the scene. Uh, most of the times, public see just the vehicles out there and the issues and, and, and good and bad about it. But we take the work we do as a maintenance very seriously. Uh, we know that the safety and security of the people relies on us, what we do. It really changed the community, and that's been um, really a cool thing for me to be a part of through my career, is just seeing how this system has changed the Salt Lake Valley um, and how people and the cities have embraced it. You know, once, tr once tracks opened, that really changed uh, not only UTA internally and who we were, um, but it certainly changed our community and the way the community uh, looks at UTA and uses UTA. And since that time, we have just continued to grow. In the last 20 years, we've built 45 plus miles of light rail. Where we've come in the last 20 years really is unprecedented um, around the country. Um, I remember when we first started we were talking about transit-oriented development and UTA we didn't even push it. The cities went and they just they t started doing it. They started changing their zoning. They started um, updating their master plans to reflect having the rail stations in their community uh, we've seen billions of dollars in new investment go in and around the rail lines. And so that was my hope when I started with UTA, was to really be on a project that I thought would really change the community. Trax is great because we're able to uh, go to the store, running other errands into town. In fact, we've chosen a lot of our uh, doctors, uh, eyeglass facility, grocery store, like I said, um, you know, even other kinds of shopping because it's so conveniently located along the tracks. It is them. It's the customers who, who come on and rely on our systems to get to work, to get to the games, to get to school, you know, uh, to get to the recreational activities. It is the community why we're here. Without the riders, we, we couldn't and wouldn't be doing what we're doing today. Thank you first and foremost for all of, all, all of the rides that you have uh, taken the last 20 years. Um, I think we're over 200 million rides at this point. Without the passengers, there would be no reason for UTA. We wouldn't do any of this if it wasn't for the riders. I'm very grateful it's there. I know when I first started riding, we only had the blue line. And uh, 
That was great for you know, going along the corridor between Sandy and to downtown. And now with the expansion of the green and red lines, that's been fantastic to help us get to more places and do more things. So I, I love that it's there. I am contributing to the betterment of our, of our community. I have met the best people. Um, probably one of my, my dearest friends right now, I met her when she was homeless. She was homeless for two years. And every day she would go to the rec center to take a shower. Um, and we started with small conversations, which now ends up she invites me to her home. She now has her, her own apartment. I invite her to my home. And, you know, we have this great relationship. But that's what, that's what happens when you care about the community and the community sees the caring. One of my favorite parts of uh, the job is actually teaching those that come after me and being able to uh, give a, an opportunity to someone to progress and find the joy that I've found. It's been amazing to see um, how that spirit's continued for the uh, 20 years. We did it over and over again, uh, no matter what it was. Uh, extension to the uh, medical center, uh, West Valley line opening, Mid-Jordan, uh, streetcar opening, and a lot goes behind uh, on getting all that done. Now we do light rail, commuter rail, streetcar, as well as bus. And so it's a really uh, phenomenal change to see how the organization was able to step up and embrace these new opportunities and challenges and be successful with it. I am really proud to, uh, of UTA, know what it's like to uh, have ownership of a project that we began um, not even knowing if we were going to be successful or not, and, and made it very successful, very successful. I think that we provide a great service for our passengers and, um, and a great place for employment for our people. Uh, some of the mechanics who work under me, I worked with them uh, 20 years ago, and I'm very proud of those people. I mean, we have the best. Uh, I know, it's pretty natural. People always feel about their people like that, but. I'm not just faking that. The thing that never, ever ceases to amaze me is the way UTA employees pull together and they make it happen. And they do it each and every day, um, which we can all certainly be proud of. But in, when times, when times are, are needed or when something happens, um, everybody just pulls together. And that's not just light rail either, or people at, at Jordan River and Midvale. That's um, you know certainly bus uh, and with bus bridges and, and the entire bus support team, and many times administrative employees that come out and help. I feel part of the community with whether it be the disabled community, the homeless community. We're all, we're all in this together. It makes me very proud to be part of the design and construction effort as well as um, I think the story is still being written around the rail line. Um, uh, we're just launching a future of tracks study to really start talking about next steps uh, for the rail system. And it's still got a lot more potential to grow and get a lot more riders. And so I think the story is still being written for the future of the, of the line and light rail. I want to say thank you to the employees. Um, you know, it takes, it takes many people to keep the track system running. Thank you to all of you for the valuable service pr you provide. I know it takes some extra work, especially on the blue line to lower the, the plate uh, to help me get on, but thank you for that. Uh, you know, thank you also to the maintenance people who keep the platforms clear in the wintertime. That's a huge service and I don't think the, you know, the maintenance and snow removal people get enough credit for the work they do. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thanks Utah and the people of Utah for building my, my train set for me for the last 20 years. Congratulations on 20 
fantastic years and we'll look for decades and decades more coming. So happy birthday, Drax, for making 20 years. It's wonderful. I think this is a wonderful celebration to say, happy birthday, Drax. This has been a great, great 20 years. And hopefully, you know, I'll be here for the 25th anniversary and then I'm out of here. I'm sorry, I'm going. It's time to retire. <laughs>